What's going on YouTube? Today, I'm gonna to bring you on the wonderful journey of engine building. <laughs> pretty much holds up till it doesn't but that was my fault all right so since i blew my motor up um i was gonna bring you guys along for a little more in depth into engines so at least the hondas so we're gonna start down at the bottom of the basic areas and that's gonna be your oil pump so i have here the um, honda manufacturer specs right on the laptop um so we're gonna start with it's going to be kind of a crossbreed of me cleaning up all my messed up parts. And then we're going to go over stuff that's good, stuff that's bad, um, and how to look and see what parts are good and bad. So we're going to start off with the F-Series oil pump, which is a really, really good oil pump. Um, I have here one of uh, my old oil pumps out of an old, one of my old 2 motors that I just kind of hung around. Um, I actually forgot I even had. Um, and then my battle pump is in the bottom down there. It's completely froze up. So we're going to take that apart too, but I went ahead and took my old pump apart. So we're going to show you guys all the different pieces and we're going to show you the service limits. All right. So here we have, um, we cleaned it up really good. So obviously this is, this sticks down in the bottom of your oil pan. And this is where it sucks up the motor. You can see there's some really thick screen there, but nothing crazy, man. It's gonna pick up like a like a bolt or something, but that's not gonna pick up like really fine metal. Um, of course, your oil filter is gonna pick that up. And then inside here, you can see this is where it, it it sucks it in and it brings it into this chamber. And what it does there is it brings it up, pressurizes flows it over on this gear here and spits it out here and then out to your to your feed the rest of your motor so what the important part is here is this guy right here making sure that it's not chewed up so as you can see well, the gears look relatively smooth clean you can still see the machine marks from it uh, it looks like it has a little rub on the outside but that's pretty normal for down into that area um, so this this uh, pump in particular we're going to go ahead and spec out which is not hard at all just need a set of nice feeler gauges um, so the service limit for the outside diameter of our gear is uh, service limit is nine thousandths and they want you new limit is between six and eight um, and i've actually was only able to get, I think, a four and a five. So right there's a four. You can see I'm putting it in between the back half and the front half of this outer gear. So that was four, and then here's five. Five does fit, and then six does not fit. So here's six, and it, it barely, it kind of fits, but it's pretty tight. Fits a little bit, but it's pretty tight. But anyway, a new a new one is six to eight thousandths. Nine thousandths is your service limit. I mean, we can just step to the nine here. Basically, they're saying if you have nine thousandths clearance, that it's a bad pump. And there's no way that's not even trying to go in. So that is good. And then there's also a limit from the inside portion. Service limit on that is eight thousandths. New limit is one to six thousandths. And I was able to get a four, I think was all I was able to get in there. So there's a four slides in and a five does not. So I got a four on this, which is right in new limits. So when it comes to your clearance, this pump is in very good shape. Um, I won't have any problems running this pump. It's not worn up. Um, I just cleaned it up really good. Also, a big thing you guys got to do if you do have a failure. So this 
this pump was out of my stock motor that failed a main bearing. Um, it spun a main bearing, so there's a little bit of material in it. So what you got to do is you got to take everything apart. So this is your check valve, um, your pressure relief valve, actually, out of your oil pump. It gets to a certain pressure, and this opens and allows the pressure to bleed past the filter system. So, and then here's your main guy that puts everything there. But what you want to do is you want to take all this apart and clean it really good because there could be metal down inside of this and then you'll find it back in your motor and that's not good. So um, what you do to reassemble is your bucket here is going to slide back down inside. It's going to sit here. Spring goes on top of your bucket. Sits in there like that. Put your cap on. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of assembly lube and uh, just bolt this puppy back up. Okay, now that you saw what a good oil pump looks like. We're going to look at the oil pump that came out of my engine, which is completely locked up. It can't move it at all. So let's get this one apart. Oh yeah. Just gonna sand it. So oh boy, I can't even get the gear out. And uh so yeah, it definitely it definitely sucked a bunch of crap up. And as you can see here, uh the really bad scarring immediately that's that's a bad pump. Uh, that'll never that'll never work its way out. We can't even get the gear out because it is so jammed in there. I mean, this pump's trash, so let's just for just for giggles. Let's see if we can get this out. There it comes. Boy, it's bad, guys. All right. Well, oh, wow. So it wasn't even just the gear, the actual, this froze up pretty bad. They can't even move this at all. Hmm. I was able to move it a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, it's pros up. So, anyways, I mean, even if uh, this wasn't froze up the way it is. There must be a lot of material on the back side. You can see it's really, really scarred up down in there. But, um, and then you can see on the inside, you can see the really big uh, divots, craters in there. So this pump is trash, <laughs> of course. But uh, that's, uh, that's what a bad pump is going to look like. Um, I'm sure the bypass valve is full of junk too. And then here's all your here's all your bearing material. So yep. No good. This is going right in the trash can. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and look at our number four piston and rod assembly, which just was the furthest away from the the crash. <laughs> um so number four bearing was actually the best bearing we had, and it didn't still didn't look good. All the Coating is wiped off, um, so yeah, it doesn't look good, and it, it's lost all of its um, tension. It's just floating around. Uh, this was the best one out of all of them. I mean, 
this is what a bearing will start looking like when it's definitely time to replace. So if I would have pulled my pan off this past year and seen that, you know, that's, that is time to replace. So, but, um, the rods held up really good. Um, rod bolts, of course, seven sixteenths ARPs. They held up really good. So yeah, these bearings were pretty, pretty beat up. So I got an X shell and I got a standard shell. Um, we're gonna be going to all X shells. Um, piston looks real good besides some trash there. Um, obviously that probably happened once the motor blew and it got, it got some trash. But um, no really bad wear. Uh, piston looks really good. A little dark up top, a little rich, but um, looks good. Clean the tops off a little bit. Kind of see. Nope, oh, they look good. No pitting. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take off the rings, which all look really good still. Um, because these buttons are actually held in, so I can't get the piston out until I get the uh, bottom ring pack off. But everything looks really good down here. It's a real shame that it happened because uh, everything was living really nice. So, all right. Look at that. I mean, uh, I'm having no issues pulling anything out. The uh, pin fits nice. It's not getting beat up. So if these pins are getting beat up, you'd have to force this out. Top of the rod is not beat. Brass bushing's not smashed out. So these were living really good. Pin looks good. Um, you can see how this pin just slides in and out with ease. I'm not bending the pins or anything like that. So um, these were living good guys until the rod bearings decided to check out. So it does happen, it does happen. All right, so that's, uh, that's our number four um, check out. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and torque it up and kind of just see what the rod bearing is at. It's a worn down and I'm kind of interested to see how much material it took off. All right, again, guys, you got the proper tools, obviously do this, mics, micrometers. So this is the crank journal. It was exactly the same as the crank journal was before I put in the motor. So the crank journal has not changed on number four. So again, we zero out this gauge on our journal and we pop her in the bearing here. This is really hard to do with two hands, guys, but I'm gonna try my best. All right, and then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna see what we're getting to. And right there is what I was getting. Two thousandths and six tenths. So two and six tenths. And this started off two and two. So I do the math, two, three, four, five, six, that's almost four ten thousandths that it has knocked off the bearing. So essentially that bearing was just, you know, getting chewed away. So um, it kind of self clearance there to that two six. So we're gonna put, we're gonna aim for two six to two eight on rods in the next motor. Um, talked to a couple of outlaw guys and I thought two two would have been okay. Of course I did build this motor back a year and a half ago I was only thinking about a thousand horsepower so and it may have lived for a little longer 900 a thousand horsepower 2.2 two is probably pretty good but I mean I just got this 8085 
I'm well beyond that at this point. I mean, and, and the numbers that I think I'm touching, you know, I need to start opening up my clearances a lot more. Um, if I would have pulled my pan when I saw the glitter, I would have seen that and I would have went with some bigger rod bearings, but I didn't. So that was my fault. But um, anyways, lesson learned, you know, this stuff, when you're doing stuff yourself, um, you got to learn these tough lessons. And I didn't know I was going to be pushing these rod bearings for what, what I'm, you know, clearance them at for my power levels. Um, but I should have went in there and opened them up some. So everything else looks really good though. So uh, bearings, we got to open them up.